Hello everybody and welcome to Bowtie Teacher. In today's video I thought I'd do something different because as you know for Edexcel there's hardly any practice papers available. So what I've done is I've gone through the papers and I've changed some of the numbers so that you can have a go at the paper again and see if you actually understand the concept that we've been going through. So if I've managed to work out how to do it there'll be a link up here and there'll also be links in the description below to my website where you can download these papers, try them first and then go through this video to try to see if you've got the answers correct. Okay, so let's get started. So as you can see, here is the alternative version for paper 1HR for the IGCSC. And if we go down to question one, there are different numbers here. So like I say, make sure you've gone through this paper first so that you can try these questions. And if you forget how to do it, then you can refer back to this video and look at the marks. So for question one, we had a, a cylinder and we had the radius of 10.4 now. So we're going to do the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. And again, we ignore that um, 20 here because that's not necessary. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the volume from the 2.1 liters. So one liter is 1000 centimeters cubed. So we can change 2.1 liters into 2100. And pi times the radius, which is 10.4 squared h. And we can rearrange this just like we did for the real thing, but we've got different numbers here now. 10.4 squared times pi. So we're going to do 2100 over 10.4 squared pi. And we get 6.18. So the new height is 6.18 centimeters to 3SF. And in the real thing, they might say how much of this is left over or how much volume would you be able to fill it up or anything like that. So just refer back to the question and it's asking for the depth of the water and give your answer correct to one decimal place. Um, in the next video that I'm going to be creating, I've analyzed all of the data from all of the past papers to try and find out how much of each topic is in the, the paper one and the paper two. So stay tuned for that one. For question two, each interior angle of the polygon is 160 degrees. So two ways of doing this. If we just do a quick sketch, this is 160. And we're going to find out the exterior angle and then divide by uh, 360. So the exterior angle will be 180 minus that, which is 20. So we're going to do the exterior angle is 360 divided by the number of sides. So number of sides is 360 divided by the exterior angle, and that gives us 18. So this would be an 18-sided shape. For question three, we've got odd numbers now instead. So let's try to remember what A and then the NB means. That means and. So they've got to be A, odd, and B, multiples of three. So there's only one of those. That would be 15. A union B, so A or B, it could be odd or a multiple of 3. So we're going to do odds 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. But it also can be a multiple of 3. So we're going to put a 12 in there and an 18. Okay. Not A, so not A would be not odd or even. So we would have the even numbers in here. Like that. Question four was a relatively simple two step equation. So, what we would do is we would rearrange this, take 2x from both sides, and that would give us negative 4 equals 12 plus 4x, and then take 12 from both sides to get minus 16 equals 4x, x equals negative 4. I'm just going to check that with my calculator. So if you've not used this before, this is the um, solve equation function that we can use. So we're going to type in 2x minus 4 
and we're going to use the alpha equals button. So that creates a different equal sign in there. And then we had 12 plus 6x. And this time we use the shift solve function. Okay. And if this is the first time you've used it, you'll have an x equals 0 there. But I've used it before, so that, that keeps the last number in its memory. We can press the normal equal sign. And when you see the L minus R equals 0, that's when you know that the calculator's actually done the calculation. So it says x equals negative 4. So it's found that out for us and we can double check that but we can't just put that in the answer box we'd have to show our working as well okay right 960 is a product of its prime factors again 960 we've got the fact button here if we press equals and then shift factorize we've got 2 to the 6 times 3 times 5 so we know that the answer will have to be 2 to the 6 times 3 times 5 and then we need to make sure that our cherry tree reflects that. So we can do 96 and 10 to try and break this down a bit. 2 and 5 here. And then 96, we go 2 and 48 to 24. 2 and 12. 2 and 6. And 2 and 3. So you don't have to circle these but I'm just doing that for clarity so we've got one two three four five six two so that equals that down there a three and a five so we know that we've got that correct find the smallest whole number that 960 can be multiplied to give a square number so remember square numbers would have to have even powers here so two to the six that's an even number in the powers three to the power of one and 5 to the power of 1. So we need to make sure that we multiply by a 3, so we get 3 squared, and a 5 to give 5 squared. So we'd have 3 times 5, that would be 15. So we can check that on the calculator. So we do 960 times 15, and see if that will square root 120. So that works out. Lorenzo increases all the prices by 6%, before the increase, it was $5.20. So we're going to do $5.20 and then multiply by, you can either do 6% and add it on, or you can do 1.06. That will give you your answer straight away. So 5.2 times 1.06, $5.51 to 2DP. After the increase, the price was $10.07, so work out the price before. So $10.07 was one, uh, sorry, that equals 1.06 times the original price. So if the original price was smaller, we would times it by 1.06. So we're doing the reverse process here. So we're going to do x equals 10.07 over 1.06. $9.50. So we'll just do that to two decimal places for currency. We've got an isosceles triangle. Calculate the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle will be half the base times the height. So we have the height, but we don't know the base. So we're going to try and use Pythagoras to work this out. And we have a 10 and a 6. So that side there, let's call it MC for the midpoint. MC squared is 10 squared minus 6 squared because we've been given the hypotenuse. 100 minus 36 equals 64. So MC is the square root of that, which is 8. So we know that a, uh, MC is 8 centimeters now, but we need the whole length of BC in order to work out this. So the area is going to be half the base, which is double the length of MC. So that's 16 times the height. So we have 8 times 6, which is 48 centimeters squared. 
There are 10 people on the lift, they have a mean weight of 85.3, so we need the total weight is going to be 85.3 times 10. And then the three people that got out of the lift had a mean weight of 70. So those, the total of the people that left was 70 times 3, which is 210. So we're going to subtract those two, and we get 643. And the mean weight of the seven people left would be 643 over 7. So that's the new mean. Okay, so 643 over 7, 91.9 to 3SF. Question 9, this is uh, some simple indices here. x to the 5 divided by x squared is x cubed, because you subtract the powers. Here we add the powers to get t to the 13, and then here we do everything separately. So we're going to do 3 cubed x squared cubed and y cubed cubed. So 3 cubed is 27, x squared cubed, you multiply those two powers to get x to the 6, and then y 3 times 3 is 9. Change 30 meters per second to a speed in kilometers per hour. So 30 meters is 30 divided by 1,000 kilometers and then so this would be the number of kilometers every second so we're going to times it by 60 to get it in minutes and then times 60 again to get it in hours so 30 divided by a thousand and then times by 60 squared is 108 kilometers per hour. Five years ago, the t ratio of Tom's age to Clemmy's age was 2 to 5. He's now 20 years old. So five years ago, he was 15. And we don't know what Clemmy's age is. So that will be x, because that's what she is now, minus 5. And the ratio was 2 to 5. So we need to go from 15 to 2. So we're going to do 15 divided by 2. That gives us divide 7.5. So we need to go 5 times 7.5 to get to x minus 5. So 5 times 7.5 and then add 5 to get back to what she is now. 42 and a half years old. So we had the box that has the different dimensions here. Uh, 4, 5 and 6. And the greatest pressure would be when the area is the smallest. So the smallest possible combination here is 4 times 5. And the largest would be 6 times 5. So pressure, when it's highest, will be 300 newtons over 20. And the smallest pressure will be 300 over 30. OK. So the greatest pressure minus the smallest pressure, 15 minus 10, is equal to 5. On the Venn diagram, shade A intersection B. So we're going to do the intersection of A and B. And it's got to be not C. So let's shade not C. Not C is everything outside the circles. So we're only interested in the ones where, where they intersect, so I'm just going to kind of do this bit. So hopefully you can see that outside of C would all be shaded. But where those both intersect would be this part here. So inside 
the intersection of A and B, but not this purple bit here because it has to be outside of C as well. So you would shade in this part here. You set notation to describe the red region in the Venn diagram below. So you can see here that we've got E and F. E and F and we're not allowed to have anything that's inside D so this would be and not D like that so similar to the one above we're intersecting E and F but not allowing anything inside of D probability that we'll go to college by bus is 0 0.4 so we we'll just fill in these, they have to equal 1. Probability that when he goes to college by bus, he'll be late is 0 0.25. So we'd have 0 0.75 in here. And when he walks, 0 0.15, so 1 minus that in there. He'll go to college on 300 days next year, work out that it'll be late. So probability of late by bus is 0 0.4 times 0 0.25 because we're going down this branch here probability that he is late by walking is 0 0.6 times 0 0.15 and we're going to add those together to get the full probability that he'll be late so 0.4 times 0.25 is a tenth plus 0.6 times 0.15 19 out of 100 so if he goes to let's just write that down probability that he's late is 19 in 100 so for 300 days it's going to be 300 times 19 out of 100 that will give us 57 Check that one. Yep. Okay, question 15. We have another line and another intersection point. So, the straight line has equation 3y equals 9x minus 5. Let's get that in the form of y equals mx, mx plus c by dividing by 3. So, we're going to have y equals 3x minus 5 over 3. That's the equation of L1. L2 is perpendicular to that. So for L2, the gradient is equal to the negative reciprocal of the gradient of L1. That means we take the gradient, which is here, 3. M here is 3. This one will be M for L2 is the negative reciprocal. So we do minus 1 over 3. Or you can do 3 times the new gradient is equal to negative 1 because when they're perpendicular they multiply to give negative 1. So we've now got that there and we can do y equals minus a third x plus c. This is the equation for L2 but we don't know the y-intercept yet and that's why we need that bit there. So we're going to substitute for this. So x comma y, so minus 2 for y is minus a third of x is 9 plus c, minus 2 equals minus 3 plus c, so c is going to be equal to 1 when I add 3 to both sides. So my equation for L2 is y equals minus a third x plus 1, and in the form of ay plus bx equals c, it will be y plus 1 third x equals 1. If it asks for integers, then we would multiply by 3, because that's the denominator on the x. Okay, whenever you see displacement, velocity, and acceleration, you're going to be doing some differentiation. So v is the differential of the displacement. So we're going to uh, differentiate the displacement 3t cubed, multiply the 3 and the 3 to get 9, and reduce the power by 1. 2 times 4 is 8 and reduce the power by 1 and the 6t will just differentiate to 6. 
Find a time at which the acceleration is 2. So acceleration is the differential of the velocity. So we're going to do it again. 9t squared is 18t minus 8 is the acceleration. And we're going to substitute the value of 2 for the acceleration so that we can find out the time. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. And then t is 10 over 18 which is 5 ninths of a second. I'm just going to leave it like that because it's, well, 0 0.55 if you want to do that. Question 17, we have a histogram. I've changed it to two passengers are between 0 and 10. So this has two passengers within this range here. So frequency density is frequency over class width. So frequency density is 2 divided by 10, which is 0 0.2. So that gives you the scale here of 0 0.2. So we can now say, well, that's 2 squares. So this will be 0 0.5. This will be 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. And we need to go up to 3.5 like that. So we don't really need that now. Work out the total number of passengers in the plane. We've got a class width of 10 times the frequency, frequency density of 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 times 10 is 9 passengers in there. 5 times 3.2. 5 times 3.2. Is that 16? I'll check that after. 15 times 1. Then we've got a frequency class width of 20 times 0 0.6, which is 12, and 20 times 0 0.4, which is 8. So in total, we've got 8 plus 12, 20, 35, uh, 35, 51, 60, 62 in total, I think. 16 plus 15 plus 12 plus 8, 62. A passenger on the plane is picked at random. Work out an estimate of the probability that they're older than 70. So, if we, uh, we just do another color here, older than 70 is just going to be this part here. That's a class width of 10 and a height of 0 0.4. So that's four passengers. And it asks us for a probability. So the probability that they're older than 70 is an estimate of 4 over 62, which is 2 out of 21. Expand and simplify x plus 1, 2x plus 3, all squared. So we're going to do, let's do the quadratic first. 2x plus 3 all squared gives us 4x squared plus 3 times 2x plus another 6x plus 9. So that's 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. That's these two brackets. Now we're going to times that by x. So we're going to multiply by x to get 4x cubed plus 12x squared plus 9x. We're also going to multiply by plus 1, so that gives us the same equation. And now we can add these up. So we've got 4x cubed, 12x squared and 4x squared, 9x and 12x, plus 9. Make m the subject, and notice that we've got m in the top and the bottom. So we're going to have to multiply this out and factorize later on. So we're going to multiply by the denominator to clear that. Then multiply out the brackets. Collect the m's on one side. So I'm going to subtract m from both sides. 
and then I'm going to subtract the QT squared from both sides as well. Then we always factor the thing that we're actually trying to make the subject, so 3T squared minus 1, and then divide by that bracket, so minus QT squared minus P over 3T squared minus 1. Alternatively here, you might have collected the M's on the other side, so let's just do an alternative here so you can see QT squared plus P is equal to M minus 3MT squared, and take out the M as a factor, 1 minus 3T squared, and then divide by that. So QT squared plus P over 1 minus 3T squared is an alternative answer for that question. Question 19, the 21st term is 54. So nth term is the formula that you have to learn. They don't give it to you. So nth term, 54, is equal to a plus n minus 1d. So we have 54 equals a plus 20d. This is our first simultaneous equation. And then the second one, the sum of the first 30 terms. So the sum of the series is equal to n over 2, so 30 over 2, times 2a plus n minus 1d, like that. So 1207.5 is equal to 15 lots of 2a plus 29d. Let's see if this divides. 1207.5 over 15, 80.5 is equal to 2a plus 29d. That's our second equation. So let's double this. 108 equals 2a plus 40d. That's a third. And then I can do two no three minus two. So one hundred and eight minus eighty point five is fifty five over two. Twenty seven point five. The two A's will cancel and forty minus twenty nine is eleven D. So D is twenty seven point five divided by eleven. 2.5. Our A value we can work out from substituting into any of these. Um, 54 minus 20 lots of 2.5. 20 times 2.5 is 50, so A equals 4. So we've worked out our first term and the common difference between them. So this would go. 4 is our first term, and they go up in 2.5s each time, so 6.59, like that. And we need to find the tenth term, so the tenth term is tenth term is equal to a plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So 4 plus 9 times 2.5. 2.5 times 9, 18, 22 point, is it? Um, times 9 plus 4 is 26.5. So that would be the tenth term of the series. A equals 27 times 12 to the n. Work out what a to the 2 thirds is. So we're going to do 27 to the power of 2 thirds, and then we're going to multiply that by 10 to the 12n to the power of 2 thirds. So 27 to the 2 thirds, we can just put that in a calculator if you're not sure. We're going to take the cube root of 27, which is 3, and then square it to get 9. And then we have the two powers multiplied, so 12n times 2 thirds is going to be 8n. 
because this 9 is between 1 and 10, this answer is actually already in standard form. But if that was, say, 90, then we would have to change the power slightly by adding or subtracting 1 like that. OK, so we've got our f of x, the coordinates of the maximum of 2 thirds. What happens when we do f of x minus 5? So it's inside the brackets, so it's going to affect the x coordinate only. So we can already write in the y coordinate. And x minus 5, it does the opposite of what you think. It's, you think it's going to go minus 5, but we actually add 5. So that's going to get you 7. 3 f of x is outside the brackets, so it doesn't affect the x coordinate. The y coordinate is going to be multiplied by 3 because it's 3 lots of the y coordinate that it was. So that's going to be a 9 there. For part b, we have a, a graph that's a version of cos x, and we have to try and work out what that version is. So hopefully you can see that the, the normal version of cos x would be just one single wave going between 0 and 360. And we actually have three complete waves here. So we know that this cos graph has been squashed by a scale factor of 3 towards the y-axis. So it's going to have to have a 3 in the cos 3x in order to have three complete waves. Now this would usually go something like that, down to negative 1, up through 90, and so on. So hopefully you can see here that the height of these graphs are double each other. So to go from the red one, cos 3x, to the purple one, we actually need to scale factor a half in the y direction. So we're going closer to the x-axis. So that would make that a 1 half. Simultaneous equations, one is linear, and then the other one is a, a power of 2. So we're going to substitute the 2x minus 3 into this y squared. So 2x minus 3 all squared equals 11. That's the first step. Multiply out the brackets. So we're going to have 2x minus 3 squared, and that will give us 4x squared minus 6x minus another 6x plus 9. And then we need 3 lots of that. So we're going to do 2x squared plus 3 lots of 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And I'm going to bring the 11 over so that I have a quadratic equal to 0. 2x squared plus 12x squared minus 36x plus 27 minus 11. And that will give us 14x squared minus 36x plus 16 equals 0. We can cancel through by 2, but we can use the quadratic equation function on our calculator to get 14, negative 36, and 16. That gives us x equals 2 and 4 over 7. So we know that x minus 2 is one of these brackets, and the other one was 4 sevenths, so we're going to have 7x minus 4 equals 0. Let's just cancel through by 2 so that we can see this a bit easier, like that. Um, 7x squared minus 4x minus another 14x plus 8. So that will give us x equals 2 and x equals 4 over 7. So we can now work out the corresponding y values. y equals 2x minus 3 is going to be negative 1. And y equals 2 lots of that minus 3. So 8 sevenths minus 3. 8 sevenths minus 3 is minus 13 over 7. So you might want to just put a bit more working in there to get your two crossovers. 4 over 7 and minus 13 over 7, like that. And in the exam, if you have time at the end, you can check these by substituting all of these values into the quadratic and see if you get 11 at the end. So circle theorems. 
We have a cyclic quadrilateral here, so we know that this is going to be 180 minus x, because these two opposite corners add up to 180. So we can do a triangle here with 50. This one is 180 minus x. And then this one will be 50 plus 180 minus x. That's these two added together, and we're going to do 180 minus those two. So when we do that, that will give us this value in here, which is C up there. So this is A, D, C. So 180 minus 50 plus 180 minus X. So 180 minus 230 plus, uh, sorry, minus x there, that gives us minus 50 plus x. So this one in here is going to be x minus 50. Now we can do another triangle, which is B, C, and E. We have 30 here. C is x minus 50, and this is x. So add those together, we get x plus x minus 50 plus 30 equals 180. So 2x minus 50 plus 30 equals 180. So 2x equals 200, so x equals 100. So that angle in there is approximately, well, it's exactly 100 degrees. Vector. I left this as it is because um, you can't really change this, this picture, but if you can try and have another go at it without any help, that will show you if you can do this. So find AQ to QC, so the ratio between AQ and QC. So we can go from OQ, QP is a straight line. So we actually have a line going through OQ and P. And if that's the case, then O to Q to Q to P, they will be in the same ratio of A's and C's. So if we work out O, Q, that means we can go from O to A plus the length of A to C, but we don't know how much this, this bit is here. So we can give this a letter like um, P, for example. So P lots of A to C, so that's going to be a fraction of the distance from A to C. OQ is going to be OA, which is A, plus P lots of A to C. So to go from A to C is negative A plus C. If we're starting at A and we go to C, we'll go backwards on A and across at C. So that would be, when we expand this out, we get A minus PA plus PC. And that would be equal to A brackets 1 minus P plus PC. So that's how we go from O to Q. And then we're going to go from Q to P. That's going to be Q to A plus A to P. And A to P is in a ratio of 3 to 1. And AB is 2C. So that whole distance there is 2C. So to go from Q to A, we're going the reverse of A to Q, which we just did. So A to Q um, was p lots of that, so we're going to do minus p brackets minus a plus c. That's the reverse from q to a with the reverse of this. And then we're going to go three quarters of 2c to go from a to p. So we have p a minus p c plus three quarters of 2c is 1.5 three halves c. So we have PA 
plus C brackets three halves minus P. That's what happens when we factor out the C for this one. So we have a 1 minus P for A here and a P for A there and a P for C there and a 3 halves minus P for C there. So if we divide those two ratios together, because these are ratios of A's to P's and C's to P's and things like this, we can divide those and we should get the same ratio because if we have two parallel lines, then if that was A plus C, for example, this would also be A plus C, but it might be a shorter line, like it might be three quarters of A plus C. So if we can show that they're parallel lines, which they are because they're on a the straight line, then the, the ratios of A's to C's are the same. So when I divide A by three quarters and C by three quarters, I get the same number. So I'm going to do 1 minus P brackets A divided by PA here. And that's going to be equal to PC divided by C brackets 3 halves minus P on this side. So hopefully you can see that I'm dividing these two ratios because I'm going to get the same answer when I do that. So I can cancel these and I've now got my quadratic in terms of P. So 1 minus P, 3 halves minus P is going to be equal to P times P here, P squared. Expand this out, minus 3P over 2 plus P squared equals P squared. So they're going to cancel out. And I have 3 halves equals P plus 3 halves of P when I rearrange this. So 3 halves equals P plus 3 halves P is 5 halves P. And P is equal to 3 over 2 divided by 5 over 2. So 3 over 2 divided by 5 over 2 is just 3 fifths. Okay, so P is 3 fifths of the distance A to C. So that means Q to C is 2 fifths. So our ratio of A to Q, AQ to Q to C is going to be 3 fifths to 2 fifths. 3 fifths to 2 fifths. Times both sides by 5 and I get 3 to 2. Okay, tricky one that one, but it's all about the ratios and the, the straight line being parallel. Final question, we have a boat that sails from X to Y, then to point Z. So Y is on the bearing from X of 265, so just under that, 265, and that is 4 kilometers. And then Z is on a bearing of 210 from Y. 210 is 180 plus another 30. And that is Y to Z is 5.5. Z. Work out the bearing of Z from X. So I need to work out the bearing to get from there to there. So we have a triangle here, 4, this one is 5.5, the angle in here, we can try to work that out, and we have x, y, and z. So if we have this bearing here of 210, and this one is 265, then we can extend this line here because this angle in here is 360 minus 265 so that is 95 in there 
So that's going to be if we've got a parallel line like this, because the north lines are both parallel, we know that's 95, then this one in here will be 95 as well. So 95 in here, in there, that's worth 95, because we have a, a straight line here of 180, and we have a bit cutting across here, which is 95, and this extra bit here is 30 to get the 210 that we originally had. So the 30 and the 95 is going to give us 1, 2, 5 degrees in here. Now that we have two sides and an angle in between them, we can use the cosine rule to find out the length of this side, and then once we have that, we'll be able to use sine rule or cosine rule again to find out the angle in x. So what we're going to do, let's call that a squared. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos 125, cos a. So 4 squared plus 5.5 squared minus 2 lots of 4 times 5.5 multiplied by cos 125. And then a will be the square root of that. So 16 plus 5.5 squared minus 8 times 5.5 times cosine 125. That's 71, and we're going to square root that answer to get a is 8.45502. So now that we have a, we can find out the angle inside here, theta. So we've got all three sides, and we can now find out theta with the sine rule. So sine theta over 5.5 is equal to sine 125 over A, which we've just worked out. So sine theta is equal to 5.5 sine 125 over A. So 5.5 times sine 125 divided by A that we just worked out is 0 0.532. And we're going to inverse sine of that to get the angle. So theta is equal to 32.1988. So now we have the angle theta inside here. We can work out the bearing of this. So we know that that one was 95. And if we add the theta, we can then find this by subtracting from 360. So we're going to add 95 and subtract that from 360. So 232, the bearing, is equal to 232.8 degrees to one decimal place. OK? So like I say, I hope that's been useful because we don't have many papers uh, for us to try and use to work out and see what we can do and what we can't do. So if this has been useful to you, just let me know in the comments below and I can do paper 2HR um, from the, the same sort of style. So hope that was useful and good luck in your exams.